But yeah, we're excited tonight um, at the end of this broadcast. So don't um, tune out. At the end of the broadcast, we are going to be giving away a pair of Vortex Diamondback 10 by 42 binoculars. We have been blown away with the response. There are more than 2,000 entries for this. And we just want to thank everyone who supported this. We want to thank all of our sponsors who have um, sponsored prizes throughout, throughout, the, throughout the weeks. Just also as a disclaimer, we, we, over the last couple of weeks, we, are a, we, we have been trying to figure out how, how to do these live streams. And um, last week, we had one of our guests in a pipe, um, but we have pulled the guests out of the pipe tonight, hopefully. And we're hoping tonight that the sound is going to be a lot better. So just let us know in the comments. We have tried to fix up our, um, our, com our, our sound a lot more. Just let us know in the comments if you, how you can hear us and that. So it's good to have you online. Um, and also, we... You feel free to ask any questions you want to ask. Uh, ask. We're going to be chatting about binoculars and scopes and that kind of thing tonight. So it's a good opportunity to, to ask any questions you have. And um, I'm excited tonight. We have Andrew Wassel. He is from Wilder Distributors. Um, Wilder Distributors um, sponsored the, the Vortex um, binoculars. And we are really grateful for them. And we have been grateful for the partnership with them. So without further ado, Andrew, we want to welcome you to tonight's, uh, tonight's Facebook Live. Thanks, Adam. Um, thanks very much. And yeah, we're very pleased to be, be associated with you guys and, and to be a part of it. And, and thanks for getting us involved. And it's from our side, it's only a pleasure to, to be involved and to, to sponsor a prize like that, like that awesome Diamondback uh, binocular. Yeah, and we've been speaking about, we're really looking forward to the new year, just doing a whole lot more innovative stuff, just to show the, the products that you guys are offering, because I mean, you guys are one of the market leaders in terms of what you offer birders. So I want to ask you, you guys work with a whole ton of birders. I know, um, I think he works maybe directly with the suppliers overseas, but um, John Kinghorn and Tony Geddes, they are Sarovsky users. And you work with a whole lot of um, birders. Has the birding um, bug bit yet? Um, unfortunately, I don't, have, I don't have too much time for birding because I'm always sorting out birders with their, with their binoculars. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a full-time job for me. It's a it's a eight to five Monday to Friday. So uh, so there's not much time for me to do any birding, unfortunately. Um, I was uh, looking forward to going on flock this year, but unfortunately that was cancelled. And hopefully it'll it'll come again quite soon. Um, but yeah, our our business is 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 working with birders and selling binoculars, and we. We, we're actually a distributor of binoculars, so we distribute them to all the retailers throughout the country. Um, in particular, only two brands. We do Vortex and Swarovski. Um, obviously, tonight's a Vortex night, um, and I think we'll do maybe do a Swarovski night another night. But, um, but yeah, we, we're very blessed to be able to work with all the birders throughout the country and to hear about all the great sightings and to be able to offer great products to, to them. Who, and, and through our products, they, they, they bring so much enjoyment, which is really awesome to see. And in terms of um, Wala distributors, you spoke about the fact that you guys are distributors of Vortex and Swarovski. You know, tell us a little bit about the company and how did, how did the company start? What is the story of Wala distributors? So we, we've been we were in the retail business. Um, we used to sell cameras many years ago. It was called Weissels. Um, many Durbanites will probably remember uh, the, the camera business. Um, and that was originally started by my great-grandfather. Um, and it sort of changed from being a, a, a chemist uh, or a pharmacy into photography. And, and, and it's developed and probably 10, 12 years ago, we got out of the retail space. And, and just focused on the distribution of, of optics. Um, and that's where we find ourselves now. So it's changed through the, through the many years. Um, it's a lot different not being in the retail store. Unfortunately, we don't deal with other brands of products. So we focus solely on the two brands. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a different business. And fortunately, it's, it's, we're still going in these crazy times. 
Yeah, Christy, uh, Christy Horner actually just mentioned she, she loved Wassels and just a whole lot of people just commenting. So it's really cool. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question. A lot of people, and I think a lot of birders maybe use binoculars and have maybe bought binoculars not knowing why they chose the binoculars they chose. So for example, I've got a, I've got a pair of um, Darren's binoculars uh, uh, and these are, they say 10 by 42. And what does, you know, there's 10 by 42, you get 8 by 40 and all these different sizes. What does that, um, those, what do those numbers mean on binoculars? Um, so most of the time, um, well, a binocular is, is basically defined as something that's going to bring an image closer. So it's going to magnify an image. Um, and you get binoculars ranging anything from about a six times magnification all the way up to about a 20 times magnification. Uh, the problem is, as you go up in magnification, so it gets harder and harder to hold the binocular steady. So we find, uh, or it's always been common knowledge that anything over a 10 times magnification is always, you end up with a little bit of shake. Um, binoculars like a 15 times or a 20 times, then you need to use a tripod. And most binoculars in the front of the binocular will have a little tripod socket, so you can fit it onto a tripod. But that's mainly for the, the stronger binoculars. Um, most of your binoculars will have a, a designation, um, preferably on the, or most of the time on the focus wheel, um, 8 by 42, 10 by 42, 8 by 32. So the first number on the binocular always represents the magnification. So it's the amount of times that it's bringing the subject closer. Uh, the second number, the 42 or the 32, sometimes it's a 25, that, is, that gives us, a, uh, or that tells us the diameter of the object, what we call the objective lens. So it's this, this objective lens in millimeters. And um, the sort of story of the, the bigger the objective lens, the more light or the brighter the image will be when you look through your binocular. So, um, it, it's sort of like t a 10 by, this is a 10 by 42, but a 10 by 32 will have a slightly smaller front objective. And in low light conditions, it won't be as bright as the 42. Um, the problem is going bigger than a 42, you, the next size up is a 50, and you even get a 56 millimeter front objective. Is when you go bigger than a, 50, uh, a 42 to like a 50, it then makes the whole binocular, the construction of the binocular becomes a lot bigger and a lot heavier. So we find a good balance that is, is a sort of an eight by 42 or a 10 by 42. And that, those are good usable magnifications. It's easy to hold steady, it's compact and, and, and not, not too heavy. And then uh, Tyron is one of the, well, someone who's part of our uh, Burning Life team. Um, he uses, bin, uh, and he said he uses binoculars. <laughs> he uses uh, glasses and he spoke about the importance of eye relief when he uses binoculars. You know, how does that work with um, birders who do use glasses? So most, most new binoculars or most, most modern binoculars have twist and twist out eye cups. So on your eye cup, you can actually twist your eye cup right in. So if you are wearing spectacles, then you can, you can almost put the, your spectacle right up against the glass. Um, if you twist them out, if you twist the eye cup out and still use your glasses, unfortunately, then your eye is too far away from, the, from the, what we call the exit pupil. So you're not seeing straight through it. On a lot of the older binoculars that didn't have twist and twist out eye cups, some of them were fold back eye cups, so you can fold the eye cups back. Um, but it, the idea is to try and get your, your spectacle right up as close as possible to the objective, to the exit pupil. And then just two questions. I think it's just they're quite appropriate for where we are right now. Dawn and Wellingcamp asked the question, I've always been struggling with focusing binoculars. What do you feel about focus-free binox? Number one, and then Marty um, Schumann asked the question, do I keep my glasses on when bird watching? Um, 
firstly about the, the focus free binoculars. Um, the focus free binoculars came out quite a long time ago. They have a couple of, the, the benefit is that they're always in focus. The disadvantage is that I think with most of them, they have a minimum focus distance of about 60 feet. So if you want to look at anything close up, there's no form of adjustment for that. Also with the focus free binoculars, they work well if you don't wear spectacles or if your eyes are both perfect, then, then they work well. But you don't have any form of adjustment. Um, on the second question, um, it's, it's better to probably take your specs off um, because when you twist your eye cup out, it creates a, a sort of a darker area. So the idea is to get your eye almost into that dark area to, to do away with all the peripheral sort of, vision, peripheral sort of light. So best is, the better vision is without your specs. And then obviously our, our target audience is um, birders and we've got a lot of people that have been part of this campaign that are newer birders or looking to start birding and it's been really exciting. We have also got some experienced birders who, who do who have been be part of the campaign. Um, in, maybe specifically thinking of birders, what are some tips that you can give um, when it comes to choosing a pair of binoculars? Um, I think it's, uh, there's, sort of, there's a lot of things. Obviously one's got to find a, a binocular that's going to sit well and be comfortable in your hands. Um, and also the vision, when you look through a binocular, it's got to be right for your eyes. And no two people's eyes are exactly the same. So what's, what's nice for me might not be nice for you. Um, the binoculars are a difficult thing to buy. A lot of people will buy it online, but you can't really look through a binocular online to, to see if it suits you um, or see how it sits in your hands. Um, so it's a good thing. If you do get the opportunity to, to look at it or to see it or to touch and feel it, try and, try and do that first because it's, 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 it's quite important. Um, and they're not cheap items. You're going to use them, hopefully, quite a long, quite a lot. Um, and a and a poor binocular can damage your eyes um, considerably. So, I think in looking for a binocular, just w when you look through a binocular, also um, a good thing to look at is when you look at it, looking through in a shop or wherever you're looking at a binocular, look into an area that's quite dark. Um, and then try and focus the binocular. And that'll just show how much brightness that binocular has. Also, when you're looking through the binocular, look, uh, most of us just look centrally straight through the binocular. But if you look into the binocular, then move your eyes left and then right again. Just see how sharp the edge of the binocular is. The binocular should be sharp all the way to the left-hand side and then all the way to the right-hand side as well. A lot of Cheaper binoculars might be blurry around the edges, but the center might be sharp. So just sort of have a look for those. Obviously, the construction of the binocular, see how it's built. Um, most binoculars nowadays are this sort of shape, the, what we call the poro prism. Uh, I mean, the, sorry, the roof prism binocular. Um, the older traditional shaped binoculars which were a little bit, had your eyepiece a little bit offset to your objective lens. Um, those are the older ones, which generally are not waterproof. Um, they were a bit more bulky. They were, if you dropped them, they, they, they were susceptible to being damaged a lot, a lot quicker than these ones. These are a lot more sturdy, a lot more robust. So try and look for a binocular that's, that's like this sort of style, like the roof prism. As long as it's a good brand, um, uh, you know, binocular, you're going to use it. It's, you don't want it to damage your eyes. Um, those are the main things to look through. Look, look for a binocular. We're going to chat about some of the products that Vortex offers in a moment, but here's a question. Um, you can go to certain um, retail stores and get a pair of binoculars for 600 Rand. And, um, you know, you look at the Vortex um, Diamondback 10 by 42 ones we're actually giving, we're giving away. They're worth about 6,000 Rand. 
And some people look at the price and they just think, you know, why not just go buy a pair for 600 Rand, 1,000 Rand? What is the difference between uh, a lower level, cheaper pair of bins? Why, why should someone spend more on, on binoculars? Um, I think, uh, it's, it's, you know, I think in, in life, it's uh, very much a, a story of you always get what you pay for. And uh, it's the same thing with binoculars. Um, some of the very cheaper binoculars, they will have a very a, a smaller exit people, uh, which so, so in other words, the light coming through to your, to your eye won't be as much as maybe something with a bigger exit people. So in those cheaper binoculars, you generally find that they are not as sharp, they're not as bright, um, and they just don't perform in that low light condition. They also don't give you the field of view that some of the more expensive ones do. Um, some of the lenses are not coated um, as many times or as properly as some of the more expensive ones, giving you more of a softer image. Um, things like color, you might be looking at a bird and with a cheap binocular, a white is, is almost a gray. Um, whereas a more expensive binocular, that white will be a white. So, especially in birding, um, color and, and true color is very important. So the more expensive binocular will, will, will have a lot more coatings on it and your colors will be a lot more true. Yeah, it's one of the things I noticed when I went from a, cheap, from a cheaper pair to a, a much better pair, it was almost as if I was starting birding all over again. Because when I looked at certain birds, the colors that came through were just were incredible. Um, I spoke to you a little bit about this before um, in terms of getting binoculars serviced. Do you recommend that people do get their binoculars serviced? Um, it, it's, it's a good idea to, to have your binoculars clean pretty much at all times. Um, but yes, probably I'm a believer if, you're, if your binoculars are working, then don't interfere with them. But if they are not working great. If you, if you can't really see if the image is a little bit blurry, um, then probably look at getting them serviced. Um, just also, also be, I think, be very aware. We see so many binoculars coming in where uh, somebody will be complaining, my binocular is not sharp. And we have a look at the binocular, but the lenses are not clean. There are big fingerprints on the lenses. So try and always keep your binoculars as clean as possible. Um, a good, a good, handy paintbrush. You know, a little paintbrush just to dust all the dust off the binocular. Um, a good lint-free cloth just to wipe the wipe the, the eye pieces or the lenses every now and then, just to keep them nice and clean. But before doing that, just make sure there's no sand or no dust or grit, because as you as you wipe into your lens, if you, you know, with a lint-free cloth. If there is a bit of sand or a bit of dust on that, it can then end up scratching the lens coatings that are on the lenses. And then Christy Horner asked the question, is there a specific coating ingredient to look out for? Um, there's not a specific one. Um, all the lens, all the manufacturers use different coatings and they all perform very well. Um, there's not really a specific coating with a, with a certain name, each, each one has their own special coatings. Um, the, best, the, the best proof is actually to just to look through the binocular and do the sort of the, the eye test, the left to right, the, the, the look into a dark corner. That, that'll give you a good idea of if the lens coatings are good or not. Just want to also welcome, I see John Kinghorn is watching. He uses, a, uses Swarovski and also one of our sponsors, um, sponsors Outliers, uh, of outliers coffee coffee roasters and we've been drinking the coffee it is amazing john welcome to you know watching on watching online we appreciate your support but andrew we're going to have a little bit of a chat about some of the products that vortex have to offer so yeah i'm going to hand hand it over to you thanks adam um hello john uh, um, so the the vortex do quite a range of of, of binoculars uh we are probably our most popular Binocular is the one that we're giving away tonight, is the, is the diamond back. Um, it's a great binocular. It's used uh, by birders, by game rangers all over the country. Um, it's a robust, strong, good little binocular. 
it's great value for money. Um, and last year, Vortex actually just made it even better by introducing high definition lenses into it at the same price. Um, it also now comes with a, what we call a glass pack harness. It's a it's a harness case. It's a case that looks that looks like this, uh, but it fits around your it fits around your chest uh, with a harness. So it comes with a with a, a sort of a, a free harness. Um, but it's a great product. Um, uh, it's, it's well made. We get very few back for repairs, which is always for us is always a good sign. Um, and we see how some of the birders in general look after their binoculars, but game rangers, on the other hand, uh, they really use their products very, very hard. And and I must say they they last them very well. Um, so this is the diamond back. Then. Jumping up a little bit, we get to the what we call the just the Andrew. Marker. Just before you carry on there, what you spoke, you used the term um, HD. What does that mean in terms of binoculars? I mean, I know what an HD TV is or that. What does an HD binoculars? And also, just um, Calvin, I know you're watching. If you can just pop the link in for your video because they they you show quite nicely how that harness is used. So yeah, what does HD mean in terms of uh, binoculars? Sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. So HD is a, is basically a high definition lens coating. So they've just all it means is that they've put an additional lens coating on one of the inner lenses, and that technically gives it the the, uh, the HD or the high definition. It's 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 a bit of a an extra coating that the manufacturers then give it to to increase the brightness and to increase the sharpness. That's in a in a lens term. That's really what it what it is. So they've gone with that HD coating. They've gone that gone with that also into the Vipers, Viper range, which is the next binocular. Um, it jumps up a bit. The Viper jumps up almost about double in price. Um, but you're getting basically effectively this, a, a very very similar chassis or same sort of body. The only difference is that your exit pupil here has increased a little marginally. So it gives it a little bit more brightness in low light conditions, a little, little bit better edge to edge sharpness. Um, then Vortex also then go up to the Razor binoculars. Um, I don't have one with me, but the, the Razor then jumps up even higher in price. And, and again, then has better lens coatings and better sharpness. So the, whilst we don't have millions and millions in our range, uh, the, the products that we do offer are really nice, concise, and um, and and good value for money, I believe. Um, in the spotting scopes, we have um, we have just come out with the new. This is the new Diamondback spotting scope. It's a twenty to sixty magnification, um, with an eighty-five millimeter front front objective lens. And um, the main difference with this one over the previous generation is that this has got a central focus, which makes it easier to use, especially in colder conditions. So this has been improved over the, over the old one quite a lot. And a spotting scope is a nice accessory, or not accessory, but it's a, it's a nice Add on to the arsenal of, of, of um, you know, to, nice thing to have apart from your binoculars because very often your binocular only stops at a 10 times magnification, but you want to see that bird even closer. So the spotting scope is a nice accessory then to have. And then, yeah, I know we had obviously having, uh, we, I had. Um, Fancy Peacock on the show last week, and he, he's uh, spoke, obviously spoken about the importance of having a spotting scope, especially when, you, when you're looking at things like waders. I mean, I've used binoculars and waders, they still can be quite far away. So especially for waders, having a good spotting scope with a good, um, with a good uh, tripod is really a, a great investment. Um, I know a lot of the, the, the spotting scopes, they also have uh, accessories, adapters that you can put onto the spotting scope so you can connect your your cell phone to it and that do um, do Vortex offer those kinds of things? Vortex doesn't know. 
No, we don't. We don't offer them. Um, we we used to Vortex used to do a a phone scope, um, which would then fit onto the eyepiece, but uh, they stopped it with the previous generation. Also, the, the I think the phones were changing quicker than they could change adaptive plates. So Vortex doesn't do. Currently, they don't do. There is a company in the states, I think, called PhoneScope, and they they make. A, a camera attachment or a, a phone, iPhone attachment for it's a sort of a universal attachment for a spotting phone. And then Andrew, um, you, you we spoke earlier on about just how binoculars have changed. In that you know, we, we've obviously seen the advancement in technology. I mean, Canon's has done some really crazy stuff. I mean, eight hundred mil lenses that are small. Um, you know, what advancements have you seen in binoculars and you know, also the way forward, what do you, what other um, advancements technology do you anticipate coming up in the near future? Yeah, binoculars have changed. They haven't, in, in essence, a binocular hasn't really changed much over the last 40 years or so. It's still a, a, almost a manual device with a manual focus. There have been quite a few variants over the years where I think that, that the focus-free binocular came out where the infinity was set at 60 feet, so anything beyond that was always in focus. Um, it came out, it was a craze at one stage. Everybody had to have a, a focus-free binocular. Um, but then people realized the shortfalls of it and then went back to the traditional style manual focus binocular. Then I think it was Minolta came out with a binocular which had autofocus in it so you would look i think it was an 8 by 32 and you'd look through the binocular and you'd have a fo two focus buttons and you'd press the focus button and it would focus and it was quite a novelty and it was very battery hungry so you'd be in the middle of the bush and all of a sudden your battery would go flat and then you'd you wouldn't be able to use the binocular so then it went back to the manual one um, some manufacturers have come out with um, image stabilized binoculars where it allows you to go up in magnification um, and activate the image stabilizer and it, and it gives you quite a nice stable image because obviously with, as you get up into a 16 times magnification you're then shaking quite a lot but the, the problem with the it's a, it's a great it's a great thought but if you but binocular very often you bump it, you knock it, it's you know it's around your neck, it's bouncy, you're walking with it all the time. And an item like a image stabilizer in a product is quite a quite a delicate and quite a sophisticated electronic piece and, and can very easily be damaged in a binocular. So with all of those sort of advancements and technologies we still find that the traditional manual binocular is, is by far the, the most reliable piece. You know, you want something that is reliable when you're out in the field. Um, where it's going to go to in the future, um, it's, I, I would probably envisage in time we would be able to have an electronic image. You'd look through a binocular, it might be uh, in electronic image that you see you might have a, a seamless zoom like you do with a camera um, but then it gets to the reliability issues again um, so I think uh, for now um, there's, there's nothing on the horizon that I can see which will replace our binoculars um, Swarovski have recently just come out with a, a sort of a new type of technology which uh, with your phone allows you to identify the, the bird in conjunction with the Merlin's bird app. Um, so that's the first type of sort of image capturing device with identification of a species that we're seeing. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll progress. But in terms of uh, binocular, uh, I still believe that the a manual straightforward manual binocular like this is the most reliable thing 
you know, you're going out birding, you want to see as many birds as possible. You don't want to hassle with, with batteries and this and that. So you want something as reliable as possible. So, so I think just the traditional binoculars is great. And hopefully they're around for a long time. And then just the last question came from Jacques de Clac. Um, he asked when South Africa can once send your Vortex binoculars for service and repairs. And just, I think also just, just off that thing, you can just chat about the, the warranty that, that comes with a pair of Vortex. Sure. Um, thanks, Jacques. Um, first of all, you can send them in to us, uh, into, into Wilo distributors. Uh, we're in Amshanga Ridge in, in KZN. So you're more than welcome to send them in. We'll get run through our full service with them. Um, we have a service team or service center that, that, that does all the guys do all day, every day is binoculars. So we can service. It's, it's actually only those are the two brands, the Vortex and the Swarovski, unfortunately. Um, but they, that's, that's what we do. So you're more than welcome to send them in to us. Um, just drop me a mail, andrew at wilo.co.za. And I can send you our service form. Um, the Vortex do have a lifetime warranty. That's the, the benefit with, with Vortex. Um, we do have a, a, what we call a VIP warranty service. Um, it, is, it covers anything, basically. It, it sometimes doesn't cover cleaning, because that is a, a sort of a, more of a service item. But, but any damage, anything like that, it is fully covered. Um, the Vortex is fully covered as long as it's purchased locally through uh, through a, a local authorised dealer. Andrew, it's been really great having you on the show and we just want to again say thank you for all the support. I know we were chatting the other day about a whole lot more projects we're coming up with next. It's just to show the great stuff that you offer birders and um, we just want to say thank you for all the support and for also for sponsoring the prize for tonight i know we're gonna in about 15 10 15 minutes we're gonna make one of our followers very happy so we really really do appreciate the support and thanks for yeah just for supporting the burning community in south africa thanks thanks adam thanks for thanks for getting us involved and and it's a great it's a great pleasure to to be involved with you guys and to your listeners thank you very much and uh we look forward to being of service if you need anything by all means just feel free to give me a shout. Oh, thanks, Moss. We'll chat soon. Thanks, Adam. Look after yourself. Cheers, eh? Bye. Keep up. Cheers. Bye. Bye. So yeah, it was really great having a chat to Andrew. Really thank, really great having some time. Um, uh, uh, like I said, uh, Calvin has popped the uh, Andrew's email address there, and Jacques just said thanks for info. We'll be in touch. So a whole lot of people are are watching online. Um, people are commenting, and again, we just want to say we are so grateful for all the support. Um, we have really seen um, so much growth um, with the birding life over the last year. And for those who are online, who are watching and are newer in birding, I really want to encourage you to stay connected to the birding life. Um, we've got a whole lot of really cool stuff we're working on, video content as well as um, blog content. Just to, um, we are going to have some stuff to obviously work with more experienced birders, but we are putting a lot of stuff out to to help newer birders so if you're if you're newer on this year check things out we've also got some cool prizes still after this year i know tomorrow we've got some bonus prize giveaways and just to show you what